Hey, so I've had a request to review uh, Culture and Cognition for the upcoming exam, so I thought I'd put together this little video um, that might help. So a reminder, this is for the exams this year, May and November, um, in the old, old IB Psych syllabus where we have learning outcomes. Um, so the learning outcome we're reviewing here is uh, how social cultural factors affect one cognitive process. Let's just break this down a little bit, get rid of the disgust. Uh, it just annoys me. Um, and we're going to focus on cultural factors so we can get rid of the social. So really the key question we're looking at is how do cultural factors affect one cognitive process? So what we have to do here is we have to explain an answer to that question and have a study, some evidence to support it. So culture and cognition. The example that I'm going to explain uh, that I teach in my course is individualism and collectivism. And we're looking at how that affects flashbulb memory formation. So before we begin, we have to look at what is a flashbulb memory. This is the memory of the circumstances when you hear news of a highly emotional event. So it's not the memory of the event itself, but it's the circumstances around when you heard news of that event. So let's say, for, for example, you're, um, if you're about to do the exams, you might be applying to colleges, you might have got some acceptance letters. So if, if you had your dream college, you might remember what was happening around you when you found out about it right who gave you the letter or where you were when you opened up your email uh that's um you know those details that that would be a flashbulb memory you know so the idea is that it's really vivid really clear like a um like the old cameras uh you know they used to have the flash um that's where the metaphor comes from um and yeah so that's that's what a flashbulb memory is and the connection we're looking at that is that collectivist cultures tend to have lower rates of flashbulb memories and so we need to have to explain, well, why why might that be? Um, in order to do that, first of all, let's look at how a flashbulb memory is formed. So according to the theory, the, they're created um, because of the, the surprise and the emotion of the event that's happened increases the rehearsal of the memory. So covert and overt rehearsal, right? So uh, if something's really emotional, really surprising, you're going to talk about it a lot. You're going to talk about it to your friends and family. Man, did you hear about that? Wow, that's so sad. Uh, and also you're going to go over it again in your uh, a lot in your mind. And it's that rehearsal, talking about it and, and repeating it in your mind, going over it, which is going to increase the memory. So, uh, for example, um, the, the classic flashbulb memory one and that's been studied a lot for um, this is the the towers the the attacks on September eleventh, um, two thousand and one, uh, in the U.S. in New York City, and most of you, you might be just about born, just a baby. Um, I was in high school in Connecticut. I'm from New Zealand. I did a year in Connecticut, uh, so I uh, I was about an hour and a half away um, from New York City when this happened, and I, and I remember it. You know, um, senior in high school, exchange student there and I remember all the details. I remember going to the homeroom, seeing it on the TV. Um, I remember the what the librarian said. I remember the intercom coming over. I remember going home that day, sitting on the sofa watching on the news. So yeah, that whole day for me, lots of um, flashbulb memories about finding out uh, the the events. Um, all right, so how does culture uh, affect flashbulb memories? So, you know, so why do people from collectivist cultures have um, lower flashbulb memory formation and it could be because uh, they don't rehearse the emotional memories as much they don't go over it they don't share it and without that rehearsal you're not going to get the the formation of the memory then we have to ask the question well why why not why do people from collectivist cultures not go through the rehearsal um and that could be because um emotions in uh, in collectivist cultures, emotions could be seen as um, dangerous, especially negative ones. So expressing your emotions, right? Um, the experience and expression of intense negative emotion could be dangerous, so, so it's discouraged. So there's not a, a culture there of valuing, um, opening out and, and expressing your, your feelings. Compared with, say, individualistic cultures where there is more of a culture or, um, or a value placed on um, sharing your experiences and uh, um, expressing your, your emotions. So... That different emphasis on the uh, importance of expressing emotion is going to imp uh, influence the rehearsal of the um, the event, of the, the details of the flashbulb memory, which is going to affect the formation. And so this could be why those cultures uh, report having fewer um, emotions. And this is uh, referenced in um, Kukowski's study, which we're going to look at shortly. So just to recap all that, that was a lot. Um, Collectivist cultures may form fewer flashbulb memories because they don't rehearse the events as frequently as people in other cultures, um, because the expression of emotion is viewed as negative, and I'm sorry, the expression of negative emotion is is discouraged, and this this may be because remember 
one of the core components of a collectivist culture is the emphasis on the group, group solidarity, group harmony, um, and the well-being of the group. And so the expression of negative emotions might be seen to disrupt that, uh, and so it might not be um, encouraged as much as other cultures. So that's our explanation. Now we have to go, well, where's the evidence for this? And this comes from the study in 2011 by Kulkowski uh, and colleagues, where they had five different countries um, total of 274 participants and we're going to look at the countries ranked from the most individualistic uh, to the least so they had people from the USA in brackets is their score out of 100 right USA UK Germany Turkey and finally China so they had a range here and what they did was they asked them for uh, asked them to recall famous public events in each of the countries right so the USA participants were asked to recall events different to the Turkey because Right, they're going to have different memories of different um, events. And they were asked to recall um, the details. And depending on how accurately uh, and to what detail they recalled the events, the, the researchers would make a judgment about, okay, yeah, well, that constitutes, that counts as a flashbulb memory uh, or not. And, yeah, and they also asked a series of uh, questions about that. So the results. The results showed that. Um, here, here are the results in mean number. UK, USA, Germany, Turkey, China. And so we can see, except for the UK and USA, which is switched, basically the order is the same as how we were ranking them in individualistic values. So the most flashbulb memories are formed on average 18 and 12 by highly individualistic countries like UK and USA. And then it gets uh, decreasing, Turkey and finally China. Um, so this is, this is good evidence here to suggest that, um, well, first of all, this shows that uh, the collectivist cultures China and Turkey do have fewer flashbulb memories um, and they also show they also also measure that um, the cultural factors influence the personal importance of the memories how emotionally intensely they were felt and the amount of rehearsal so um, you know for example all of those the emotional intensity how much they rehearsed how important they were viewed as were lowest in Chinese participants um, and and yeah, so what what this suggests is that the the cultural values, individualism, collectivism influences those key factors that lead to flashbulb memory formation, right? How emotional it is, surprising, how surprising, how um the personal importance, and also most importantly the amount that it's rehearsed. So now you've got all that. How would you answer that in a short answer question? Your short answer question in the exam, if it was paper one part B, might look something like this. So you'd simply have your introduction, you'd explain why collectivist cultures have fewer flashbulb memories, there'd be a paragraph, maybe five maybe five to eight sentences. Um, then, you'd, then you'd have your study, Kulkowski, here's the evidence to support my explanation, and then your conclusion, right? Boom. Give me a, what is that, eight out of eight now? Um, so that's what that, that would look like. If it was an essay question, if you were preparing to write an essay for the cognitive level of analysis, um, your essay question might look something like this. Uh, it could be examined or discussed, doesn't matter, means the same thing. Um, so you'd have your introduction, same, just like a short answer response, you'd have your, your central argument explaining why they have fewer flashbulb memories, you'd have your study of Kolkowski. Uh, and then I, you could also throw in your study, uh, study of Brown and Kulik, um, if you're not familiar with this one, um, you, you might want to look it up. Uh, but this was just a comparison of African American and um, Caucasian participants and what they remembered differently. So. Um, we can also see that, actually, this is looking at social factors. So basically, the, the social group you belong to may affect the importance of an event which will influence your emotion and your rehearsal of that event. So a similar explanation, but basically we're, we're changing cultural factor to social uh, factor here. Um, changing from cultural values to uh, social belonging and social, yeah, social identity uh, in group. And then you'd have your counter-arguments, because you have, in order to discuss... Um, you need to be saying, well, but hang on, is this really the case? And in the conclusion, this is what your essay would look like. So just in terms of counter-argument considerations, you know, to how to show your critical thinking, um, I think a good thing to point out would be that cultural dimensions are generalizations. Are we saying that all Chinese people are going to have fewer flashbulb memories than all Brits and um, Americans? No, that's not what we're saying. These are generalizations that there are going to be individual differences. These are general trends. They're not rules that apply all the time. Um, and you have to think, okay, are there other explanations for why um, people in China and Turkey had fewer flashbulb memories? And it, could it be that the culture affected the reporting of the flashbulb memory? So remember, they measured the flashbulb memory by how much detail they reported to the researchers. 
it could be possibly right we're hypothesizing here it could just be that they had the flash memory formation in their mind but did they um but they might not have reported it in as much detail and, and you can elaborate further there as to okay why may they not been uh, inclined to um, report as much and if you can link that to the values of collectivism that would be great um also good access to media make a difference Right? If you're in a country that's really heavily saturated with media, um, TV, news, internet all the time, then that's going to affect how much you see the information. Um, so if we compare countries that, um, highly developed countries like you know, um, the UK, USA versus uh, 2011, well China was pretty developed 2011, so it's not that old. So um, you know, if this was in, in a city, you know, um, Beijing, Shanghai, then Africa, it's going to be pretty comparable in terms of media exposure to um, other places in the West. Uh, but yeah, so, um, that, that could be a question and then we'd have to ask, okay, well, where did the people in the studies come from? But it's okay to ask questions in the, the counter argument part. Um, there could be individual factors as well. So individual differences, not just whole groups and whole cultures. So, you know, um, one individual difference, you know, your hormone levels, um, how much cortisol you have is going to affect your memory. Um, it, some people are, are more emotional than others. You know, that could be a factor. Um. And if we're looking at the, again, looking at the study itself, you know, this only looked at six six countries and about 40 or 50 people from each country. Um, if we're talking about collectivist cultures, there's a, there's a big range on that continuum and there's a lot of countries in the world, right? And this is a sample of six. So while it's, while it is evidence to support that, that explanation, um, we have to consider, right, to what extent is that evidence um, reliable, you know, across different countries that haven't been studied and considering that is a quite a small um, sample considering the the scope of what we're looking at here okay so with all that um there's a lot of lot to revise there so let's think about this how we can we use this for multiple topics um this explanation th this example can be look used for the principles of the social cultural and or the cognitive level of analysis so one of the principles of the social cultural level of analysis is that social and cultural factors affect behavior and if you talk about your behavior as flashball memory Boom, you've got the example. One of the, the principles of the cognitive level of analysis is that um, social cultural factors affect cognition. Same thing, right? Um, and so you can use an example for either of those. If you're in the social cultural um, level of analysis, highlighting the, the element of the cultural, right, the cultural values. If you're using this in the cognitive level of analysis, a principle there, then you're highlighting the, the flashball memory um, element. Uh, you can also use this to evaluate one theory of how emotion may affect one cognitive process. The theory I like to use here is flashball memory theory. So this is why I also teach my students Brown and Kulik. Um, you may have also done this in your course. And so you can use this um, example actually as a counterpoint to this evaluation to say, well, yes, emotion affects cognition, but we can't rule out the, the role of social and cultural factors. And so here you take what, what was your central argument and it becomes your counter argument. Um, in that learning outcome if you're writing an essay about that. Uh, and for I like to use this, uh, or students um, in my course have the option of using this for their cultural dimensions as well. Um, now, just remember that individualism and collectivism is one cultural dimension, not two. So um, you may want to prepare a second one there, although I would recommend uh, being an expert in one and having a second just as a backup, because they might not ask about two. So there are three learning outcomes there that you can also, you can double up here. Right, study smarter, not harder, and use this for that as well. So um, that's the end. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And yeah, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. Thanks.